In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about contour lines in ArcGIS Pro. Things like how to generate them, how to visualize them effectively, and uh, how to add labels to them, and so on. You can draw contour lines for representing pretty much any spatially varying property. Things like distribution of concentrations of a certain chemical compound in the soil, variations in land surface temperature, groundwater table levels or ground elevations, and so much more. For today's demonstration, the property that I'm going to decide to use is ground elevation, but you can basically apply the same concepts and the, and the techniques that we're going to discuss for pretty much any variable of your choice. So as the very first step, what I'm going to do is get some digital elevation data, like what you can see on the screen right now. And if you want to download an elevation data set for yourself, absolutely for free, you can head over to Earth Explorer web portal. And I have done a tutorial, a complete tutorial showing you the process. And you can check that out by clicking the link that's appearing on the top right corner of the screen as well. And assuming that you have sorted all that out and have downloaded a digital elevation data set, you can just simply go ahead and drag it and drop it onto your ArcGIS Pro workspace. And after that, we can actually go ahead and get started with generating some contours. Now, before that, uh, I would like to do a quick inspection of the data set that I have right now with me. And for your convenience, I'll be adding this particular data set as a downloadable link in the description below of this video as well, just so that if you don't really want to bother about generating your own elevation data or downloading your own elevation data, you could just basically go ahead and uh, download this particular data set from the given link. And you could just basically follow along the steps to see whether you could go ahead and generate some contours, just like what I'm going to do right now. So right over here, you can see the elevation range. Basically, the maximum elevation uh, in this piece of land is about 850 meters and the minimum is negative two. So you can kind of get a sense of uh, what sort of a contour interval would be appropriate for what we are going to do over here. And generating contours with ArcGIS Pro is quite simple and straightforward. You can head over to Analysis and open up the Geoprocessing panel by clicking on this Tools button. And in here, you can simply just search for Contour. And uh, you could either select uh, Contour under 3D Analyst Tools or Contour under Spatial Analyst Tools, depending on your license. In my case, I'm just going to go with this tool, which is under Spatial Analyst Tools. And uh, you can see that we need a couple of uh, inputs. So I think it goes without saying that the input raster is going to be the raster that we're dealing with right now. So I'm just going to drag this and drop it over here. And uh, when it comes to the output feature class, you can just basically uh, give it a name. I'm just going to name this as contours test one. And uh, it's quite crucial to specify a contour interval because in this case you can see, you can sort of get a, get a feel for the elevation difference. Uh, let's say if you assume the base contour to be at zero level. It's, it's basically a range between zero and 850 meters. If we go with a contour interval like one meter, you can imagine that it's going to generate a contour line for every elevation increment of one meter. And that's going to just massively populate our entire workspace with contours. So I don't think it'll be that appropriate to generate contours with, uh, with an interval of one meter. I think just to be fair, I'm, I'm going to go with a value of like 75 or maybe 100 meters. Let's just go with 75 and see how it looks. We could always rerun the tool and uh, generate the contours according to our needs. And as I told you guys, I'm just going to leave the base contour to be zero. And we're not going to apply any Z factors as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now we can just go ahead and run this tool. And as you can see, we managed to generate a nice set of uh, contours. Usually what I would do is I would actually head back to this newly generated layer, right click and uh, open the attribute table, just so that you could get a feel for uh, what sort of things uh, got generated when we ran this tool. So you can see there's one uh, field called contour and then another field called shape length. So this shape length might not really be relevant for our purposes today because it's basically giving us the, the length of each contour line. But if we come back to this contour column, we see values that are increments of uh, 75 meters. So, you, so you'll so you see a bunch of zeros and then a bunch of 75s and then a bunch of 150s and so on. So it would be quite handy if we could actually display those values as labels as well. 
so that we could actually see what's going on in terms of the elevation variations. And uh, if you would like to change the color, well, by default, you could see that this greenish color is the thing that gets assigned. But if you would like to maybe make some changes to this color, you could uh, right click and go to Symbology. And from here, you would be able to maybe pick a color of your choice. Uh, if you go to Properties, and from here, you can select the color of your choice. I think I'm just going to go with uh, maybe a bit of a lighter green color like this. You can see that that actually stands out more from what's going on in the background so that you could visually quite clearly see how the contours happen to be in this region. And coming back to the task of uh, adding labels, what we could do is while we have this layer selected, we could head over to labeling right over here. And from here, and in our case, these were the four columns that we had and Definitely what we need is the contour value, the actual contour value. So when you click on this and you can activate this labels button. And as soon as you do that, you can see that the labels actually start uh, to appear. So if I again take a minute to interpret uh, what we're seeing right now over here, this particular line, if you were to actually trail along this line, you would be staying at an altitude of 450 meters. That's basically the definition of uh, drawing a contour and similarly if you go back to this line it basically indicates all the elevations that are at a level of 375 meters and so on so when it comes to the appearance of the label we can actually do quite a quite a bit of things uh, when it comes to how we would like to display these labels now one of the things that you immediately want to do might be to change the font size and uh, you could do that directly from here. So under labeling, you could actually change the font type and the font uh, font size as well. So let's see if I were to maybe reduce this down to about eight. You can see that the font size decreases, but you will actually start to have more control over how these uh, contour values are displayed. If you can head over to this uh, text symbol, if you can expand this uh, sort of a text symbol panel and uh, from here, you can see that you have a lot more control uh, when it comes to how these uh, values are displayed. And uh, one of the things that I would be interested in doing is to change the font color of these labels because as you can see, the background is black and white. So in certain areas, this uh, black font color might not really blend well with the background. You probably won't be able to read it uh, correctly. So I would rather go ahead and maybe change the color to be Let's just go ahead and uh, select yellow and see how it looks. So you'll always have to hit apply to see how it appears. And uh, I think that's quite readable, except for these areas where the background happens to be white. Or, or you could just go ahead and maybe specify the same color for the labels as well as the contour lines and uh, click apply. Yeah, that's pretty nice too. And you could always uh, play around with what you have in your background. For example, let's say if I just turn this elevation data off, then you can see that now what I have is basically a base map. And if you're just going to stick with this as your base map, then obviously the color, the choice of your color for contours and the labels should be different because as you can see, it's not really readable. So in that case, I would first go ahead and change the contour line color to be something a bit uh, more dark. Let's say like purple. Yeah, and at the same time, I would go ahead and change the font color as well by opening up this text symbol. And from here, I could change the font color to be the same. Yeah, and as you can see, the elevation values are quite clear. And based on this base map, which has a bit of a 3D touch to it, it's also possible to see quite clearly how the elevation actually varies. And you can see that a river is actually running down around this area. And uh, you can see that the contours are shaped accordingly because when a river is formed, the lowest elevations are basically along that river line. So you can see that the contours basically uh, adjust to reflect that property uh, right around this region. And, and even here, you could see that we have a bit of a high elevation at these two spots, 600 here and 750 here. And uh, there's a drastic drop uh, when it comes to this area 
you can see that it's basically reducing down to about 75 meters right around here. And uh, before we wrap up uh, this tutorial, I would also like to discuss a bit about the position of this, uh, these labels. If you head over to this position tab and uh, from here you could basically select a number of different options when it comes to how you would like to place this. For example, let's say in this case, uh, if I want the label to be placed in a way that it just cuts across the contour line, then you could actually go for something like, let's say, centered straight or centered perpendicular, something like this. Well, if that uh, satisfies your needs, but uh, I think it's it might be more appropriate in this case to maybe have it uh, in a way that looks like this, probably. Well, it all depends on your, on your preference and uh, basically what you're looking for. So that brings us to the end of this quick tutorial. And if you do have any questions regarding the process, add a comment down below and I'll see you guys again with another tutorial soon.